Hi, in this video, I'm going to show you how to get started creating the parallax 3D effect on your images. So I'm going to go grab this image of an owl. And once you drop it in here, you have to select either the magic motion or the parallax effect. So I'm going to go with the parallax effect over here. And in the next step, we can go through and adjust, you know, the size of, you know, the image, the resolution that you want. I'm going to go with uh, original just to make it so I can see the entire picture. And then go to the next step over here. Now, on the first step for the parallax effect, what we need to do is cut out our main object or objects. And then in the next step, we need to go through and actually fill in the gap where, where we've cut it out. And then we can go through into the editor and start animating the uh, parallax effect. So what I'm going to do is click on the Select Object tool. And then just simply go through and start uh, drawing out around this main object. So what I'm going to do is just kind of cut out this branch as well as the owl. And I'll just quickly go through and do this. So you basically just have to left click around it like so. You can use a scroll on your mouse to you know zoom in and zoom out. And you want to try and go as close to the border as you can or the outline of your objects. Okay, so you can kind of play around with like this. Um, and once you've gone through and added all your dots, you can then make adjustments to it, add new dots as well. So I'm just going to go through quickly and just add these dots in. Okay, cool. So once you've just connected the dots like so, you can go through and have a look at your outline and you can, you know, go ahead and adjust the dots like this. You can also add new dots by holding down control and left clicking to add another dot. Uh, maybe I'll just quickly make some adjustments over here. It doesn't have to be perfect because we can add a blur kind of outline on in the editor to make it more smoother. Uh, but let's just make it like so. Okay, cool. So that's looking pretty good. And what I want to do now is um, give this a name. So let's call this one L, like that. And if you want to select multiple objects, you can also go through and click select object again and, and draw it out again. And you have multiple selections. So I've done this. I'm going to do the next step over here. And in this step, what we can do is basically we need to fill in the gaps of the object that we just cut out. Because when we go over to the next step over here into the editor, um, once we start playing around with the camera, you're about to see if I just... Maybe I'll drag this over a little bit. If I start playing around the camera, you can see that we've got this black background cut out and it doesn't look very good. So we need to go back over here to the next step and use the clone tool. So if I go to start cloning, I'm going to bring up the radius quite big. So you can see I've got a really big selection over here. Um, and what I'm going to do is simply uh, go close to the edge of that cutout, hold down control to take a sample of this um, part of the image and, and left click on it and then I just need to move my mouse over slightly and you'll have to see that it basically uh, copies that image uh, like so and I can start filling in this gap and you can also make other selections so let's say you want to select over here just move over slightly and just add in your uh, you know your kind of crop like this um, so let's just go and I'll just quickly grab this and move this all the way down over here and yeah, you want to you know try your best to make make it look as good as you can. The best thing to do is just to um, follow along with me with this image because it's quite a good one to start off with. And as you get better and, and you figure out how it all works, you can um, you know play around with more complex images. Um, but yeah, you just go through. You can zoom in as well, and you can adjust the radius to make it a bit smaller. Um, and then just left click to select, and then yeah, play around with that like so. So what I'm going to do is, um, you know, just go through and keep filling this in. I'll make this a bit bigger. And, um, and then we can go through and help, hop in over to the editor and start animating this. Okay, cool. So that's looking pretty good. Um, it doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, but yeah, you can go through and play around with that. And then we go to the next step over here. Now, as you can see, if I just move this camera over here, you'll be able to see we've got this really nice looking 3D effect. And if I zoom in, you can see we've got a branch and our owl, and it's a lot f uh, further away from the actual background. And the closer I move my objects to the left, so over here, you'll be able to see that we've got more of a 3D effect like that, okay? And the reason is that uh, over here is the beginning of the camera or the kind of the closest part of the camera and here's the end of the camera so 
if I go back up to layers, it's easier to move over here. If I bring this complete to the right and then go back to camera, you'll be able to see that it's basically moving as one object with the background. But if I go back up to layers and then move this over yeah, about here and go to camera, it's a lot more 3D, okay? So what we want to do is go back to layers and over here you can add things like text. So let's just add, uh, let's say zoo and I might adjust the letter spacing and I'll make this text font BBAS and position it like so. And let's say open. And I'll adjust the letter spacing as well and I'll go with something like work sans. Okay, something like that looks all right. And one other thing as well I wanna add is a butterfly. So I'm gonna to go to, over to effects over here and select this butterfly here. And I'll just resize this one down and position it over on the branch like that. And I'm gonna go with the speed of this animation to make it slow, okay? So now I've got a butterfly and what we're gonna do is we want this butterfly to rest on the branch. So to do that, we wanna make sure that it's in the same position as the um, object of the owl or the branch like that. So that's on the same basic uh, axis as this object. So when it zooms in, it's not gonna fly away. It's just gonna stay there, okay? So what we wanna do now is begin adding things like particles and camera animation. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go to particles. I'm gonna turn this on and you can select different particles over here. You can also upload your own custom PNG icons or images and you can create your own, have your own particles. Um, this one looks really good and I might adjust the blur slightly. Um, I think it looks right actually. Maybe I'll bring down, maybe the size slightly like this. Maybe bring it, let's have a look. Something like 30, might be all right. Okay, cool. So now we can create the animations. So I'm gonna start over here at this position. I might rotate it slightly like this and bring it maybe across a little bit like that. So this is gonna be the start position and then I'm gonna double click on the timeline at five seconds to create a new keyframe. And these keyframes you can obviously position where you want. It's basically creating an animation from this point to this point. And at this point, I've got this one selected. What I can do is use the plus uh, icons over here to zoom it in and also you know, drag it out to the left slightly maybe and maybe also rotate it. Uh, let's go back like this maybe. Okay, that's good. I might also adjust the text so it's on the same position as the other text, like that. Okay, something like this. Looks quite cool. So it's going to go from here and it's going to zoom into here. And yeah, let's just preview that actually. Okay, that's looking really good. Maybe I'd have the text slightly in line, I guess, with the other objects. So something like this. Um, and I could actually rotate it so that the text is in line with the camera. So something like that looks good. You can play around like that. And you can also, if you select the camera and go to settings, you can adjust the rotation and the scale over here as well. If you want to rotate it like this, things like that. Bring it down to zero actually like that. And yeah, this looks, that looks pretty good. So let's just preview that. Cool. I think it actually looks better if you actually rotate it in. So I might just rotate this slightly. Let's say we start from, maybe we can start from about oh, this minus six and I'll zoom in a little bit as well. So let's say from that kind of position and then it zooms in like this. Okay, cool. Let's just preview that. Okay, that's looking really, really good. So one other thing we can also do is you can adjust the duration of your timeline. So if you want it to be longer than 10 seconds, when you export it, you can obviously adjust this however long you want. Um, I'm gonna go with 10 seconds. And what I wanna do is I want this to start at this position and also end at this position. So with this keyframe select, I'm just gonna double click to create another keyframe and it's gonna be in the same position as this one and just drag this right down to the end. And it's gonna go from here and it's gonna go back to here so that when I play this on my website or on Facebook, it's gonna, continually loop without any um, jitters, okay? And one other thing as well, you can also adjust the easing of your animations. So from from here to here to this keyframe, it's gonna have this kind of uh, easing. You can create like 
some really bouncy ones, elastic ones as well. I'm gonna go with, um, let's go with power three for this one. And for this one from here to here, I'm gonna go with sign, it looks quite nice. So let's just preview that. Okay, cool. So yeah, that's how you can go through and create a really nice looking parallax effect. Uh, make sure to check out the other tutorials as well with more advanced uh, techniques and things like that. Um, once you've finished creating your video, you can go to uh, save and save the project or you can publish it by clicking on publish and just add your own, um, save, choose where you wanna save it to and just publish it. Uh, but yeah, that's the main things uh, in creating this parallax effect. Have a go yourself. Make sure to download this photo and try it out as well um, to get started and yeah, have fun creating. Mm -hmm.